Greetings in the name of Yahuwah and his son Yahusha Mashiach. My name is Malak Shalomo and today is the 2nd of October 2023. Right now the time is 8.32 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. And um, I'm going to do a little um, trade setup and technical analysis on like um, the U.S. dollar, the bond market, um, the Russell 2000 and the ES. Um, probably look at oil as well so i'm gonna I'm just run through these really quick and just to get like a, a, a idea of the sentiment of the market overall you know what i'm saying so um let's start off here with the us dollar and the us dollar is basic is very simple at the moment um, we have a 61 percent fib retracement um, resistance line right here we either break through it and we head to the upside or we just um, pull back and kind of move sideways right or we just follow through um, back into like um, this high volume area here right so we either get continuation or we get a pullback right here um, just looking at this candle right here um, this is very bullish at the moment the volume on this bullish candle though is not so good for for um the area it covered but still um this bullishness right here this buying probably led into some of that so it didn't need excuse me it didn't need as much volume to push up right so we probably um cleared out some shorts and stuff like that so it just moved up with kind of like a short squeeze so right now we have to have some initiative um, buyers here to push price above this 61% fib retrace fib um, fib resistance line right here, and that's basically it for the US dollar right there. That's um that's what it it has to do, or it's gonna pull back, right? So let's take a quick look here at bonds, at the bond market. So this is MUB Municipal um, Muni bond the etf and um let's see let's make this bigger let me take off the camarilla levels all right all right so this red line that you see in here that's the es now i read in some books um that the bond market is is basically kind of is is divergent compared to the the um the es right so what i'm looking at here this red line this is the es and to me it's following the bond market right so i don't see any divergence in it really so i did read that in numerous books that the bond market moves kind of against the the es right but right now i'm seeing what i'm looking at here and this is this is um even from COVID, pre-COVID, you know, levels, we were moving in tandem with the ES. So right now I could see here that the bond market moved sideways a little bit and the ES kind of pushed up. And now that the bond market is pulling back, the, the ES is pulling back, right? So this is looking more like correlation than um, divergence right now. So let's see the bond market basically has this gap right here let's see Hold on. all right so we created this gap right here that's too big all right so we had this gap right here that hasn't been filled we have one two three four five six days now where this has moved away from this gap. So this gap might just hold as resistance, you know what I'm saying? Because they try to kind of push back up on these two um, kind of doji candles right here. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Right, so these two doji candles right here try to kind of pull back and fill the gap they it acted as resistance and then we kind of created another little gap right here as well right so basically the bond market is looking real weak you know everybody's selling selling bonds right now 
So nobody wants to kind of hold U.S. bonds because, I mean, I mean that's a no-brainer. You don't really want to hold U.S. bonds at the moment, right? So let's see here. Let's throw on the Camarillos. Right, so the Camarillos is in a, this is the monthly levels. It's in a lower value relationship. This is Camarilla R3 right here. This is Camarilla S3. Let me just make it bigger right here so you can see it. Right, so that's Camarilla R3. That's Camarilla S3. And we have a lower value relationship where Camarilla R3 is now below cam where Camarilla, Camarilla S3 was last month. So that's a, a lower value relationship and um, it's looking like, let's see, hold on. It's looking like we could get to like Camarilla um, S6 quite kind of easily. That's 99.63. So right now we up at 101.93. It's looking like we could eventually get there, right? So um, 99.64. All right, so... And if that continues to move lower, then I guess the, the ES is going to move in tandem, right? So let's see what else we're going to look at here now. All right, let's take a look at, at copper for a minute. All right, so copper is, is like a gauge of um, um, bullish sentiment. So if there's construction, if the economy is good, is healthy, there'll be a lot of construction going on and every building that goes up needs copper wires for the electricity to run in the building and stuff like that so it's a good gauge to to see how well the economy is doing because when people have excess money they build right so and that's been that's been forever you know what i'm saying like when egypt had excess money they built pyramids so when we have excess money people build so let's see Right here, we had this accumulation phase from from around June 2022, right? So we had this accumulation accumulation phase here. We had this bullish run above the VPOC, which is this dotted white line right here. Um, they probably took profit, tried to buy at VPOC. They kind of failed. So now we're down here back at this accumulation level, right? So we either get buyers or we get we get this move here down to this high volume node, right? So in between here is a low volume area where you can see in the accumulation phase here, we had this bullish run up. Um, then we come back, we tested it, right? And then we pushed off from there. So this little area right here is a low volume area. So that's signified by this purple line right here and this comes back into the meat of the accumulation the high volume area so we might if we get a if we get more downside we'll slip through here and probably get through to the high volume area so right now copper is at 3.6375 the high volume area is at 3.4970 right approximately 3.49 let's go to the center of it 3.4940 right so it's looking like from here from the vpoc area we got some rejections sellers start coming in big selling happened um today and now we can get some follow through through this low volume area here all right so let's see so the sentiment that sentiment is um is bearish right so looking looking at the russell 2000 here the E mini Russell 2000. Let's see. All right, so this is like a, a bigger market with all more companies um, in it than the S and P 500 or the ES. So this is a better gauge of the overall economy, right? So this has been moving like in a range, right? Back and forth, back and forth, right? And now we're back down around the bottom of the range. And this is kind of like where the VPOC is. Excuse me. One second. Right. So it's either we, we get bias here and we push up again. Or 
we start breaking this long term range, right? And coming down into these areas, the, the edge of the profile, the bottom of the profile here, a low volume area. And um, if this breaks, if this breaks around, let's see, what's the what, the low here is 17 to the 9.9. If it breaks, we have a lot of downside area to, to get through. You know what I'm saying? Because we're coming back to these levels right here. Right? These high volume areas right here. Right? So if we do break break from this um this ranging kind of um, pattern right here which is a long a long term kind of range you know what i'm saying so if we break this here we could have a lot of downside you know what i'm saying so i usually look at this during the day when i'm trading the es because this this is kind of like a to me it's a bigger gauge of sentiment because this involves all the companies right um well, 2,000 companies rather than just 500, right? So if this breaks, then to me it's saying that everything is breaking lower, right? So it's looking like it's headed there. So let's see what else we're looking at. US dollar, Euro USD, right? So the Euro USD has a close correlation to the ES. Um, it's a risk on kind of kind of pair right now between the euro euro and the US dollar. So it's been on a downtrend here. Um, we kind of pushed up nicely up to one point, approximately 1.12748. And now we broke some of these levels here. And um, at let's see, we broke some of these lows at roughly 1.05133. And now we're we're just below it. So again, just like the Russell, this has a lot of downside exposure if we break these lows, right? So again, either buyers step in here, and if you look at it with with the U.S. dollar, right? Let me just go back to the U.S. dollar. It all depends on what the U.S. dollar does right here. If the U.S. dollar breaks through, we're gonna get breaks breakdowns in the market. If the U.S. dollar pulls back from the 61% Fib retracement um, resistance line, then we're going to get some support at these support levels in um, in these markets, right? Mm -hmm. So where will we? Euro USD, right. Right, so let's see here. Right, so as you can see around this area here, the 31, 38% um, Fib support level, right here around um, 1.06107, we had some. You can see like the wicks are trying to support it a little bit around this area. Buyers trying to come in. We got the flush through. We came back. We retest this level, and now we're heading down to the 50% level. Right, so. If I'm if I'm taking a trade, I'm probably trying to head to let's see how much pips that would be. Um, let's see. From here to here, about 67 pips. So that breakdown there, um, you could probably start taking some profit if if you if you sell from around this area start taking some profit around the 50% level because it might just slow down just like it did at this 38% level, right? You see where we had these buying wicks? And let me use my arrow, right? We had those buying wicks right there at 38%. We can start getting those again at 50, 50%, right? So let's see here again, where we going, where we going? Going to the ES. All right, let me go to the volume chart on my volume profile chart on the ES first before I go to the, the pivot levels. Right, so I have this um this volume profile from the 22nd of September 2022. That's when we kind of found, started find, finding support here and we had this bullish run-up. So the VPOC is at around... 4227.25 and we're just above that right now we probably might come back to to test this vpoc level this is where vwap is the annual anchored vwap from the beginning of the year 
we're getting some you can see we're getting some wicks there people trying to buy at this level um maybe maybe we might get some buyers to support that's again if the us dollar does not break out then we'll probably get the support right here right and, and as you can see in the russell 2000 2000 it's at the it's at a support level um the euro usd is kind of broke support already and the es now is kind of like at a support level as well so let's see if we get buyers here if they don't come through we'll pro <clears throat> excuse me we'll probably get through to this vpark level around 4224 yeah 4224 all right so let's see how many um how many points is that Right, so roughly, roughly 400 points. Wait, this is, yeah, 100. 100 or 400. Which one is, which one is it? Let's see here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so roughly about 100 points, 397 ticks, something like that to get to this VPOC level right here. Let's see here how much let's see how much we moved here. This was a 74 74 point day. And we usually get I I realize that um when we move we probably move like when we have a big day like um a big sell off day is usually around like between 70 to 80 points, right? So let's see what happened today. What did we get today? We got like about 59 points, right? So it wasn't, it wasn't a big sell off day or it wasn't really a big day compared to these other candles. So that's where the, the, the support is coming in with this wick right here at, at VWAP. All right. Let's see. Um, let's go down. Let's go to the five minute chart on my pivot charts right so let's see what we got here so this is the central pivot range right here this blue is the central pivot this green right here is the bottom central pivot and this red is the top central pivot right so it's in a narrow narrow setup right now it's on a narrow range compared to the prior day it was much wider you see this was the central pivot the bottom central the top central and um this signifies like a breakout right price could easily break away from this or break up right because it doesn't have much room to contend with like here like if price was stuck in between here it's still within the range um this here is a very small range this here is a retest right now we had this open um at this level here open was what 43.25 i mean let me make sure right the open was 43.26 and then we got down here to the the money zone weekly lower puck right so all this right here let me just explain what that is Right, so this is the weekly um, money zone value area, right? So the market profile value area, this is the value area high right here. Let me just point that out. Value area high. And this area here is the POC. And this is value area low, right? So we're trying to get out, if, we, if we're moving lower, we're trying to get out of, the, of last week's value area, right? So we're still within last week's value area and um, we need to break lower here. We need to break at least 4287.25 to get out of last week's value area. So that could be a target for me um, in the trading in the next tomorrow's trading day. Let's see, but let's see where I could find a setup, right? Even right now, this is a good short right here. Like off of this level, it's a lower value relationship in the in the CPR. Um, we had a breakdown. 
retest and now it's looking like um it's gonna break this uh, money zone weekly upper park level so this could be a good short area i don't know i might take it but um i don't think i want to trade overnight because sometimes you gotta hold these trades for like until like one two o'clock in the morning i ain't really feel like staying up today um so let's see let me throw on the camera levels let's see if i could identify some trades for tomorrow so the Camarillo level is an overlapping lower value. We have a lower value relationship, um, overlapping lower value relationship where this Camarillo level here is now at 4340.75. Yesterday it was at 43.42. So it just moved down slightly. It didn't really move down that much. And um, Camarillo S3 yesterday was at around 43.09. It's now at 43.07.75. So this is um this is this is a tricky place to kind of short because you're kind of in between Camarilla levels. You're kind of in the meat of of yes of last week's um, value area. So. To be honest, I would think like around here would be would be like, like when you lose this park area, I would think that that would be a good setup for a short. So let's say let's say around here when you break these lows, probably get like a a stop, a six point stop. I usually have like a four point stop and try and catch catch the drop all the way down to like the value area low the weekly value area low so that would be a 29 point um drop and that's feasible you know um whether that will will happen by 9 30 it depends on where we open at 9 30 tomorrow so um i'm looking at this as a possibility it depends on if we if we push down maybe to like camarilla s3 right here and probably get a bounce by 9.30, came, come back up here, and then we could get an entry to, to come down to these levels, right? Um, hold on. Also looking at, at previous week's low, right, which is around here at 42.77. So this is a big area as well because if we're if we're gonna continue lower, we got to break um, the previous week's low. So this is a major area for me right here, um, a major target as well. I know if if shorts if the bears really want to push price down, we got to get to this level. So this is a good level as well. So if if it starts um, if we get a good entry somewhere around here, or even the breakdown of Camarilla S3, right? Like let's say price moves down lower by 9.30, right? And we get this this um breakdown of Camarilla S3, come back retest. We could get a nice move to to um previous week's low, which is 29 points, right? 29.75, roughly 30 points, right? And then we have another target here again at um the weekly cam S4 right and that's at 42.67 right so we have a couple targets for for a continuation lower and we also got to think about if we do get support at this camera s3 level so let's see here Right. So if we see if we see support here at like this Camarilla S3 level, or you could see here weekly Camarilla S3 as well is at this level right here, which was yesterday's low. Right. So if we do get bias here again at these levels, or even Camarilla S3, right, or even Camarilla S4, right. It depends on how price action moves. We could actually get a long long position hold on one second right so we could actually get a long position from let's say yesterday's low 
right? And we could come back up to the CPR, right? Or the, the meat of the market, basically. So it's around, you're, you're kind of getting like a rejection or bias coming in before we hit the, the weekly value area low. And that will push us back up to the, the meat of the market or the, the POC, right? The point of control, which is in the middle of the, the value area right here, right? So that's the value area high. This is the POC level right here. And this is the value area low. If we get support around these levels, we could get a buy back up to the POC level, right? If we get support at CAM S3, you get entries here. Wait, hold on. And we could take that back up to Camarilla R3. So our S3 to R3 travels. You can, that's a possibility as well. Short covering and stuff like that. That could happen. So it all depends on how, how price action moves tonight and how we open tomorrow so i use these levels as as my um my action levels basically you know so yeah that's my that's my trade setups let me let me leave this on right here um if we get support we're looking at support i would say around this weekly camera s3 level probably come back up to this park level here or possibly the the um the weekly floor pivot around this level right here. Let me just make this bigger so you can see those labels. All right, you can see that's a weekly floor pivot right there. All right, so that's another meat of the market right there. All this area right here is kind of like where price would come back to and kind of slow down. So you see here price is slowing down around these areas. You see how price is congesting around these areas right here. Let me, right. So you can see all around this area here, we are getting congestion, right? From the weekly CAM S3 level, we're getting support, right? And now we're back up here in the meat of the market, right? So if it breaks down, we get support again, we bounce back up, we coming back up to the meat of the market. If not, we get continuation and we go in with the trend, which I would rather do. Right, we would I would want to short around let's see, let me pull this out here. I would like to short around this level here or the breakdown of the puck. Right? Depending on where we open. And then my target would be previous week's low, at least. And then if we get to push through there, then we get down to uh where is it? Oh, yeah, previous week's low. That's my target right there, right? If not, you can still see some support. You could take profit somewhere wrong at this um, money zone value area low. That will be 30 points. If you come down here to previous week's low, that will be 39.75, approximately 40 points, right? So to catch those moves is easier said than done. You know, there's a lot of um, back and forth while while traders you know fight for position and stuff like that so in theory this sounds good but it's 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 harder to execute right you gotta get the the proper entries and no matter what you see sometimes you might see something contrary to you might get a big bullish run-up candle right here at the open coming up to this level and you might think man like this is bullish I, maybe i should go long right you still gotta that's why i do these trade setups where I'm prepared for stuff like that. When it comes up here, I'm shorting right there, boom. And I place my stop and that's it, right? Um, and if we if we keep going down, then, you know, fine, you know what I'm saying? But if we start getting like support, you know, cam, cam S3 right here, like if I short right here and cam S3 starts to show like it's creating too much support, then, you know, you want to like trail your stop down and try and kind of, kind of secure that 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 profit right because it might just be off of the first bullish candle just coming back retest to go higher right so all of these things you gotta kind of prepare for mentally you know what i'm saying so yeah that's my little trade setups and a little um a little um fundamental analysis or 
technical analysis on a macro level kind of say showing where the market is everything is kind of like at a support level and um, the us dollar is at a breakout level so we'll see which one is 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 gonna is gonna perform better is the us dollar gonna perform and get the initiative buyers or is the the es gonna get the bulls coming in to support at this level you know all right yo it's malak shalomo um this was my trade analysis technical analysis trade setup for october 3rd 2023 and um i'll see you all tomorrow man all right y'all trade safe stay blessed